Hey, sorry folks. <laughs> That's loss. I thought that <laughs> I I didn't even look at the logo. One second. Oh my god, how did I I I just I picked the first one. Oh my god, it is loss. Oh Oh my god. Why? <laughs> I didn't notice. I didn't notice. Well, boop, here's the real logo. <laughs> I didn't I didn't notice. I didn't notice that it was lost. God damn it. Son of a bitch. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what a great way to start the stream. Alright, uh, so this is... I don't know! I didn't notice! Hey guys, welcome to the stream, I'm Ryan Phantom, that was Loss. Uh, and this is 413, also known as Homestuck Day. It's been a one year, uh, since Bring Me Hive Swap, everyone's favorite album from Ryan Phantom Live. Featuring some songs such as Hussy's a Cuck and Bats in My Mouth. Uh, and that was basically the whole album. Uh, somehow that has like 400 views on YouTube. I don't know how. Whatever. Uh, and two years since the Homestuck finale? I think. I think it's been two years since Act 7. Uh, wow. It's really, it's been a while. But here we are, two years later. And I didn't know Friend Sim was coming out today. But apparently it did. Yeah, it was uh, 99 cents. So I went out and I bought Friend Sim. I have no idea. Oh. Hi! Hello! <laughs> I didn't even know the camera. <laughs> I didn't even know the camera was on for this setup. I don't even know why it's on. I guess I could show you guys. I'm wearing, wearing my Homestuck shirt. There you go. All right. Can't. Also, the, the webcam's not situated right. That's right. I, I didn't bother to set it back to normal when. Uh, when I was fucking around with the Pokemon cards the other day. Uh, there we go. Now we're good. Uh, and now that it's uh, kind of situated a little better, you can actually see I got my uh, I got my Alpha Kids lunchbox back there. You can see it right next to the Alpha lunchbox and right next to the Stranger Things lunchbox. I have my my uh, my uh. Anyways. <laughs> I got my Homestuck hat up there, but God knows I'm not going to put that thing on. It's fucking filthy. All right. Let's get rid of me. Goodbye. Goodbye, Satan. All right. All right. My Alpha Kids lunch. Oh, funny joke. Wow, Mimos. A good joke. All right. Just give me a second. So I haven't actually booted this up. I just wanted to start streaming and didn't deal with it on stream. So... Give me a couple moments to get this all set up. It might be a little loud. I might have to adjust the volume. I will have to adjust the volume. I have no idea what to expect from this game. I didn't, like, look into it after it got announced. Good music. Oh, my goodness. Are you fucking serious? Oh, my God. So, I know nothing about this game other than the fact, um... Buy a Friends for 99 cents. So, it's the home, it's the Homestuck. That was, I heard, I heard a little bit of the Homestuck's theme in there. Son of a bitch. Hear that? Yeah. There we go. Yep, there's a little bit of the Homestuck in there, but, I mean, who could have seen that coming? Show mouse off. All right, I think we're good. Uh, so this is a game. I guess this makes sense as to why they were introducing so many fucking fan trolls. Not fan trolls. So many background trolls that probably weren't even going to have a part. A really big part in Act 7. No. <laughs> Act 2 of Hive Swap. Uh, I guess it was probably for this. Or they made this because people liked the trolls. I don't know. Either way, isn't that the gun guy? Isn't that, isn't that the MSPA guy? Hold on. 
Let me, let me see if I can find an image of what I mean. Oh my god, I think it is! Yeah, MSPA fan! Yeah, hold on, I got, I got my favorite GIF. There we go. It's him, the reader! <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. Alright, uh, anyways. Whoa. Saw that? Did I do that? Hold on. Oh, interesting. Whoa. Whoa. Alright. So I probably won't be finishing this tonight. Uh, I don't know how long this game is. For 99 cents, it can't be that fucking long, can it? That's actually a lot of, a lot of settings. Alright, uh... It can't be that long of a game for the price. Uh, but we're going to be doing... Uh, Mimos and I are going to be doing a Shovel Knight race later. Uh, so that'll be fun. Alright. So without further ado, here we are. You've just crash landed on the planet called Alternia and staggered from your smoldering wreckage of your ship. You are completely alone in the strange world. Desperate for information, for provisions... The possibility of a bit of medical attention would be great. But most of all, you are desperate for friendship. <laughs> Won't someone on this godforsaken rock, rock be your buddy? Any weirdo will do. You're not that picky. Hang on. What's this now? Is someone approaching? Oh. Oh, shit. I mean, obviously, we gotta pick a dog. Come on. They give us the choice of... Which one is this? Probably Riska and Hot Dog Boy. I don't remember. This one was this one was probably Riska, right? I think. Oh boy. All right. Well, we gotta pick Hot Dog. Come on. It's Brit's favorite. Yes, yeah, someone is approaching. A strange, gray-skinned alien with a cozy-looking hoodie. Perhaps they will make a good friend. Hello. <laughs> Let me adjust the volume. Prepare for goofy voices from Ryan. Why did the music suddenly get louder? Alright, that'll work. I know! It sucks! I, I don't like that you have to look up Problem Sleuth now. I gotta think of a voice to give him. What's up? Oh! Hang on, sorry. I didn't get a good look at you before I started talking. I guess you're really weird looking. Is- Oh my god. His quirk is hot dog buns. <laughs> His quirk is hot dog buns! <laughs> Your stammering reply eventually conveys that you're a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in need of medical treatment. You're also really lonely and wouldn't mind making a new friend right about now. He's a good boy. Yes, he is. Hungry, huh? I see what your game is. You aren't sure what he's talking about. Then your eyes drift towards the obvious target. That exquisite hot dog he's holding. It looks really, really good. Your mouth starts watering noticeably. Ah, no! I knew it! You're just like all the rest. Your agenda is have my relinquish my delicacy. <laughs> well, forget it. I've been tricked out of two other oblong meat products this week already. I know you probably think I'm an easy mark due to my blood color, but I still have some dignity at least. You don't know anything about his blood color, or why that would matter in this conversation about his hot dog. You're hungry, sure, but you didn't mean to cast a threatening gaze at his meal. All you really want to do is make a new buddy, so you don't feel quite so alone in this strange new world. I see. You just want a friend and not my sweet meat. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get a little paranoid when I walk around with such delicacies in public. You can't be too careful. Folks tend to get really greedy when I look in their eyes around my warm sausage. These are odd ways to express the things he's saying, you think. But it would be rude to point that out. He's talking like Donut from Red vs. Blue. Probably the best to change the subject. Get this blossoming friendship moving right in the right direction. Alright, here we go. Oh, we actually do get choices. Ask if he lives nearby. Yeah, or I used to, I mean. 
My place was bombed by the drones a little while ago. Look at that face! Look at that look at that mouth! Now I don't have a hive, but I'm making it work out here. Foraging for tasty things when I can. I've gotten pretty good at it. Talking to people into giving me meat products mean. Quickly feel a sense of pity for your new friend. I thought you had it rough, crash landing here, hungry and friendless. Come to think of it, feels like your armor's broken. Your ribs too, maybe, but enough so pity. <laughs> this is about making a new great friend. You ask your friend if there's anything you can do to improve his life. Oh, wait! Are we friends now? Like, is that official? Man, I don't know. Why don't we slow it down a bit, see how things go? I'm not saying it's out of the question, but I think I should take some time to see if you're actually friendship material. Somebody I trust, you know? Not just another looky-loo gunning for my delicacy. Oh, damn. <laughs> you got over- What? You got out over your skis again. Of course, he's right. This is totally reasonable. Feel- You feel sure you could do what it takes to win him over. You make a mental note to avoid looking or mentioning his hot dog, since it seems to be a sensitive subject. You do everything in your power to avert your gaze from the hot dog. You are aggressively not looking at it, in fact. Don't think hot dog thoughts. Don't think hot dog thoughts. It's working. You aren't thinking about hot dogs at all. It's like he isn't even holding one. No one ever even brought up the fact that hot dogs exist. He seems to notice, on some primal level, the current non-hot dog mindset. He smiles. You pay closer attention to the boy's face. It's a nice smile he has, actually. Very kind, disarming. A few freckles he in the, here and there, a mop of messy hair draping over his eyes. What a nice friend this would be to have, you think. He's kind of adorable, really, if you disregard the prickly attitude about his hot dog. Okay, wait a minute. You don't want to start thinking thoughts too friendly. You should dial this down a little. Stick to the basics. You just want a cool new friend, nothing more. You should try to spark up some non-meat-related conversations soon, before things get awkward. I wonder about his house. He got bombed? Yeah, you know, routine drones pass through my hood. A little bobbing, a little culling. That's how it goes around here. I was lucky, Wood. My Lucis, not so much. He's a godder. Oh no, he's crying! You don't know what a Lucis is, but you can deduce it was something important to him. Someone important to him. Probably died in the bombing. Rather than overwhelm him with annoying questions about his culture, you decide the right play is to show him some sympathy. Thanks. I miss him. Sometimes, I think. I enjoy savory bund delights as a way of covering up the pain. They're so good, though, it's hard to stop. I don't know. It probably a pig? It'd be really funny if it was like a giant pig. Also, I favored the juicy meats before he died anyway. It's something we did together. <laughs> How did we start talking about my hot dog once more? Let's drop it. Please, dude, don't bring it up again. He didn't bring it up, but you don't want to correct him. The boy is clearly grieving. <laughs> you see two faint red tears roll down his cheeks from behind the messy bangs. Your heart can't take it. You have to console this homeless boy somehow. Then he'll definitely be your friend. You mean Mayor McCheese? <laughs> you saying Mayor McCheese is his fucking... <laughs> but what to do? Give him a reassuring hug. You open your arms and approach him with a posture of great compassion. You furrow your brow upwardly a bit as if to say, I know. I know how hard it is. You advance and he leans backward a little as if caught off guard by your sympathy. If you're coming on too strong... <laughs> Mayor McCheese. But you know there's no turning back now. Don't just throw the brakes in an imminent, heartfelt hug like this. You embrace him awkwardly, and all goes well for a moment, until you realize your arm is broken, and it seizes up reflexively in pain. It jostles the hot dog into his hand! He bobbles it! Both gasp. You try to detach from the hug so you can catch the dog, but it's already on its way to the ground. Oh no! In your attempt to save it, you stagger backwards and slip. The hot dog gets smushed under your big dumb ass. <laughs> the moment of its contact with the ground, Diamond lets out a shriek. No! Ah, dude. Dude, my dog! You scramble to get up in time, hoping you're not as owned as it looks. But your feet keep slipping and your butt keeps grinding the hot dog into the 
<laughs> Happy 413, everyone. When the carnage finally subsides, you roll over and check it out. It's completely unsalvageable. Just a gross, meaty mud mash. Like the hot dog never even existed. Diamond howls in agony and slumps over backward against the tree. Oh no, you fucked this up so bad. That's it, man. I lost everything. I'm not sure what the point of even living is anymore. Oh no! We're absolutely mortified by your clumsiness and foolishness. You have a feeling you'll come thinking about this moments for years to come, during those insecure moments where your mind seems to be looking for any excuse to make yourself cringe with self-doubt and shame. So you can't help but feel this guy is being a little unreasonable. It's just one hot dog. There are probably plenty more of those to come by. For those who know where to look in this strange world. His horns are hot dogs, I just realized. He himself said he makes a habit of enjoying these, so they can't be all that uncommon. Maybe he's just an unusual psychological disorder surrounding the fixation of a particular food item. Yes, that could be it. Poor guy. This just means you won't he won't ugh. This just means he needs your support as a friend all the more. You won't give up on your friends, or for that matter, people who you're trying to desperately become friends with. That just isn't who you are as a person. You have an idea. You run it by him with a sense of optimism and salesmanship. The past is behind you. There's no need to wallow in self-incrimination and guilt over the hot dog incident. Diamond perks up a little. You... You want to help me get another hot dog? Absolutely. It could be a fun adventure, you say. Something to bond over. To bring two new buddies closer together. Oh, you don't say that out loud. But you really hope it's true. I don't know. Could be a log shot. <laughs> his, yeah, they might connect through his head. Sometimes it can be days before I'm united with another plump treat. I glistening, I glistening with perspiration. Steaming, relaxing comfortably in a soft, melt-in-your-mouth loaf. <laughs> Damn, I really want a hot dog. <laughs> he just said hot dog. Guess I don't have much choice but to take you up in your offer, do I? What do you have in mind? It's a good question. You haven't made a plan yet, and frankly, don't even know where to begin. But he's interested in spending more time with you. Which is the most important thing. You'll figure something out. This just makes me want Act 2 even more, but they're probably going to take fucking forever to make Act 2. You decided this display of confidence is called for here. Real slow, it's a real show of leadership to improve morale. You smile, hold your head up high, and tell him to follow you. You know exactly what to do. Well, not really. But you give no indication of that at all. Yeah, no, he definitely knows what hot dogs are. He's, he's just being a little bastard. He's definitely intrigued. You've got him hooked now, you think. He's probably wondering if he hit the pay dirt, finding a new friend with the hot dog hookup. Of course, you don't have the slightest idea where to find a hot dog. Oops. Oh, oh, you can, oh, you can go back. Interesting, okay. And you call them meat products, despite the fact that they are quite obviously hot dogs. Yes. Uh, no, it's a Alternia Espresso. I see. Of course, you don't have the slightest idea where you can find a hot dog. <laughs> you gotta admit, you enjoyed the feeling of being important and valued by a potential friend. You don't know what- you don't want to do anything underhanded, yet- can't help but feel you should probably milk this social gambit for all it's worth. <clears throat> this way, you say. So you begin marching confidently in a random direction. He obediently follows and begins rubbing his tummy. Begin to feel nervous almost immediately. I have absolutely no idea how this is going to play out, or if it stands any chance of resulting in a hot dog at the end of the journey. Ah oh, well, you'll figure out something along the way. I already drank all my water. I fucking poured myself a glass before I started. It's already gone. You lead him through the streets, winding through the yards and strange-looking houses, and he follows. He takes care to make sure you both are not seen, which could get you both in trouble, apparently. The improvised circuitous route. Cir circuitous. God damn it, hussy. Appear a route appears to be provoke his suspicion. <laughs> Dude, are you sure you know where a dog is? Seems like maybe you're lost. Oh, absolutely. You're absolutely sure you know where to find one, you say. You're just... 
throwing anyone off the trail. He might have been following you. He nods solemnly, as if that makes perfect sense. Phew! But you can't keep him guessing like this forever. You've got to do something. Take some bold action. Keep his interest in this wiener quest. <laughs> you say this way, down here. This is a shortcut to the hot dog supply you're privy to. It's the mother load. Um, in the sewer? Yes, totally. It's just a short trek through the sewer. Shouldn't be more than another hour or several. Of sewer trudging, that is, if he still has the will to do what it takes to get his hands on more juicy dogs. Oh, hell yeah! You know it! After you, man! An hour later, you're so deep in the sewer you've lost all bearings and sense of direction. You could be anywhere by now. You've taken so many crazy turns. I know. Yeah, I know where the dogs are. I know where they at. Still, you don't let up for a second that you're lost. You've made each turn with decisive conviction. He's still following you, but he's having trouble keeping up. He's out of breath and struggling with the foul smell. Can't see you're enjoying it much either. You can't let on to the fact that you're, what you're doing now is anything other than the most casual routine for you. Like you do this every day. Just a quick jaunt through the sewer and hit up the vast, mythical trove of meat products. Okay, when you put it that way, maybe this is all sounds a bit insane. Still, you're in too deep to second-guess yourself now. This is awkward, simulator. I hate this. Hey, I gotta... Ugh, I gotta stop and rest. I can't lie, I'm starving for a heavenly frankfurter. <laughs> but this might be too much for me. I don't think I'm cut out for this. You pause and look back. He's sitting down now, slumping against a filthy sewer wall. Tensely relieved to see you may have just won this impromptu game of sewer hot dog chicken. But more importantly than that, this looks like an ideal time to show some sympathy. Have a bonding moment with your would-be friend. You sit next to him, and with your broken arm, put a hand on his knee in a platonic but deeply understanding way. Your arm hurts when you do this, but it's worth it. Every little gesture counts when making a new friend. I just... I kinda suck. My Lucis is gone, I don't have any skills, and most people think I'm weird for liking hot dogs so much. Probably just gonna get cold. I'm no good at going on adventures or doing anything hard. Probably. Oh. All I'm good at is finding an easy meal here and there, however, I can get it. Like talking people out of their fine sausages using tricks or other play ploys, which end up losing me friends. It's been unthinkable that anyone would actually want to do anything nice for me. Or would want me to have that sweet, sweet meat I desire. At least it was unthinkable until now. Your heart begins to race. Could it be... Is... Is this shitty improv... Improvised sewer escapade actually working? You can't believe it. Nobody's ever done so much or worked so hard... <laughs> to, to try and get my hands on another magnificent banger. <laughs> Where's Boop? Bangers and mash. Holy shit. Sorry for being emotional, but, like, this is new for me. I don't know how to handle it. I'm I'm just so grateful. I'd be thrilled to call you a friend, man. Whatever you are. You're overjoyed. Unbelievable. It's just too good to be true. What now? It's such a sudden good turn of good fortune. I hardly know what to do. Should, should you hug the guy? Last time that didn't go well. This time he's not holding a hot dog for you to clumsily defile, so maybe this is your moment. Wait. Fucking smacking bangers and mash? What's that? A deep rumbling through the sewer begins to echo through. Uh, a deep rumbling sound begins to echo through the tunnels. Oh shit! They found us! It's a drone, dude! I guess I'd like sewer duty? We gotta run! He gets up, grabs your hands, and sprints. It's a lot faster than he looks when motivated to get moving. He turns this way and that as the rumbling gets closer. But he slips on something. You both tumble into a river of horrific sludge. Bro! I can't swim! Help! Your bad arm finds purchase on the ledge, and though it's very painful, you heroically salvage your friend from the muck with the other arm. He coughs, he coughs and gasps for breath. Find a nearby ladder. Shove him upward until he starts climbing on his own and follow him. <laughs> you burst through the lid in the floor, and you both flop out of the hole, drenched in filth smelling like horrible and completely exhausted. 
But at least you're safe, you think. Hey, man. I just want you to know, even though we didn't find the glorious treasure you were leading us to, I'm happy how it all turned out. Maybe I don't need hot dogs in my life as much as I thought. Maybe that's not the real treasure after all. It's been a journey for me, let me tell you. I'm learning so much about myself, about life, because of you. His bushy hair is slicked back from his eyes due to the sludge. He's giving you penetrating, soulful gaze of presumably pure friendship. Or is it even deeper than that? Wow, this is intense. Uh, then something catches your eye, just above him. Something dangling. Lots of dangling things, actually. Come to think of it, it's really cold in here. Freezing, in fact. Finally realize, holy shit. You're in a weird alien meat locker. You're absolutely surrounded by dangling meat products. Including many sausages. Thousands of them. You begin to sob. Your sobbing soon turns to unrestrained wailing of raw catharsis. He joins you. The tears flow freely from you both. You embrace each other and let it all out. Suddenly it hits you, both of you. This is by far the happiest day of your life. <laughs> Meet heaven. I just realized this says volume one. I think there might only be two. I think there might only be two friends. That makes sense. I bet they're going to come up with these like between each act. This will be like Paradox Space of Hive Swap. God damn it. <laughs> Meet heaven. Hot dog based catharsis. <laughs> Oh, God. All right, hold on. Let me <laughs> gather myself. All right. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Meet heaven. All right. Well, that's good. At least there's only two friends. It's not very long. No wonder it's 99 cents. Someone's approaching. It's Ardata. Someone is approaching. A strange, gray-skinned alien clad in blue. Perhaps they will make a good friend? Dear God. Just what are you supposed to be? Your stammering reply eventually conveys that you're a lost traveler who is hungry and probably in need of medical treatment. You're also really lonely. What am I making a new friend right about now? Oh. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> How funny this is. How very droll. You, you want to be my friend. It's too much, this, this thing at my doorstep wishing to know me in any capacity. The hilarity is somehow escapes my ability to capture with maniacal laughter. How rare. You apologize for your presumptuous request. You hang your head, turn around, and begin to walk away. And just what the fuck do you think you're doing? Who invited you to leave? You stop in your tracks obediently and turn to face her again. Your possibly broken ribs are throbbing in pain. This does not strike you as the right moment to exhibit weakness. Oh my god, you're so right. Oh my god, you're so right. Son of a bitch. It is three eyes. Unbelievable. Hey, ay ay It dawns on me that we may have gotten off on the wrong foot. The wrong saunt. <sighs> it dawns on me that we may have gotten off on the wrong saunter pod. Thank you, Andrew Hussey, for overcomplicating the troll version of foot. Where are my manners? Ghastly behavior on my part. After all, it isn't your fault. You seem to have you seem to be some sort of hideous freak, is it? Such a tragic creature cannot be held responsible for such a devastating shortfall of social competence. I would weep for you, really, except that crying out of three eyes at once gets a bit messy. I did, I really did. I do that a lot when reading Homestuck, so instead, I think I'll be also saving my tears for someone less offensively worthless. You aren't sure if she's inviting you inside 
or if she just got you to stay a little longer so you could she could insult you some more. You try to remain stoic while your confrontational new friend decides what to do with you. Unfortunately, you sniffle slightly. Oh. Oh, my dear. You're sad? <laughs> so amusing to me. Mildly endearing, even. Perhaps. I'll decide later if it's endearing once I have more information. It's entirely possible I will retroactively decide it's disgusting. But for now, try to put yourself at ease. You completely pitiful fool. Not one more sniffle. Do you understand? This is like a mix of Vriska and the Condens. You nod while practicing exemplary control over your nose. You have gotten yourself so agitated. I wonder why. You have, no you have nothing to worry about from me. Of course I will be your friend. Conditionally, I mean. There is a chance that the designation will be formalized if you behave in ways that I approve of, starting now. Let's call it a friendship in progress. Agreed? Your heart swells. This is what you've been waiting for. A new friend. Oh, gosh. All you have to do now is try not to fuck anything up at all. Possibly for many hours. Come into my hive. This way, after me. You look like you could use some nourishment. Honestly, yeah. Seriously, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Vriska was, like... Vriska was, like, up there on the, on the blood tier. Like, she was in the top. Like, top four or five, wasn't she? Was Gamzee above her? Y yeah, because Gamzee was purple. I think it was Vriska. It was Vriska, Gamzee, Aridin, Feth. And then Terezi was right in the line. I think. She was close. Yeah, Vriska didn't add. And Vriska didn't act. She was pompous, but more of like a pompous asshole. Like, just the meanest person ever. I don't know what it is that whatever you are eats, uh, generally. But it doesn't matter. You will eat whatever it is I have on hand if I tell you to. How does that sound? Equius. I tried to forget Equius because we share, unfortunately, the same uh, astrological fucking... <laughs> Uh, me and Equius have to share Sagittarius, unfortunately, as much as I hate Equius. How does it sound? Why couldn't I have had Terezi? My favorite. Sounds... Sounds good. I'll do whatever you say. Obviously, it sounds good. You will definitely enjoy it. You will enjoy everything I provide you with. Until you... And tell you... Oh, with until you to do. I can't imagine any sort of negativity or disagreement coming from one of my friends. I know. Ripperino and Sagittarius. I will assume that we share this philosophy when it comes to friendship. Yeah, fuck you, Mimos. <laughs> you got Libra, aka the best one. Oh, you got Vriska, huh? Vasca. <laughs> You say, oh yes, absolutely. You nod enthusiastically as you can without aggravating your broken ribs. <gasps> oh, sorry. Uh, I had some... Not oblong meat products, but some uh, circular meat products for dinner with my spaghetti. And they are... It causing my indigestion to act up. You consider giving her a thumbs up as well until you realize that one of your arms is probably broken too. Try to make sure she doesn't notice, though. It'd probably be leaving and probably leave a bad impression. <laughs> yeah, I know. As if we have any of us have control. Come with me. There's something I need your help with. Follow her into her hive. It's a bit gloomy in here. You suppose she's going to fix you something to eat, as she promised. This looks dangerous. There's like blood and... The sink is... I don't know if it's just colored that way. Oh, and the the door to the... Does she harvest troll horns? Oh, no. Oh, 
I'm, I'm scared of this troll all of a sudden. And meat hooks. Yeah, I'm 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 scared that this this girl is like a, a troll horn harvester. Uh, you fall her into her hive. It's a bit gloomy in here. You suppose she's going to fix you something to eat, as promised. Maybe. Pass through her kitchen and out of the other side to another room. Okay, I guess dinner can wait. This way, and try not to let any of your broken limbs slow you down. A good friend... Yeah, we're going to run into ourselves down there. <laughs> good friend wouldn't allow such trifling physical ailments to cause me any inconvenience. Oh. So I guess she does know you're injured. Fair enough. You hobble a little faster through another door in a much darker room. Now down a flight of stairs? Hard to see. There are torches along the wall ahead. A monstrous noise rumbles below. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, no. I'm gonna get fed to, like, a spider queen, aren't I? Don't mind her. She's just hungry. She's always hungry, though. What's that? You're hungry, too? I have not forgotten. What sort of piece of shit friend do you take me for? You didn't remind her that you're hungry. You, th you thought it. You thought it, though. Can she read your mind? You hope not. It's gonna make this friendship and progress a bit awkward. Here we are. This is where you'll be most useful to me as a friend. Oh? What is happening? You look around. With a sense of relief, you see no sign of whatever hungry thing was grumbling down there. You are less relieved to see several other kids trapped in cages of various shapes and sizes. One of them makes eye contact with you. The boy is the same kind of alien as her. Horns and all. There's a dark red symbol on his shirt. His expression seems to plead with you. He struggles and says, Help! Your new friend looks unamused and twitches her finger. Help! Help, Lo. By which I mean hello, of course. <laughs> what? Help, Lo. By which I mean hello, of course. Looks like you're the friend of progress chosen by the great and beautiful Ardata. They weren't saying help. They were saying help, Lo. <laughs> She's my savior for my reason for being. I'm nothing without her. I'd hollow myself out and let her make a nest inside of me if she'd permit it. Turn away from this boy. You don't ever want to hear anything he ever has to say ever again. <laughs> don't mind him. He's always regarded himself as a comedian. Come, over here. This is what I need your help with if you're going to have any value to me as a friend. You're led into a dank corner. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, you're going to call it like you see it. It's a dungeon. New friend has a dungeon full of sad, suffering children. Presumably a monster lurking somewhere in here as well. It's not ideal. Then again, social beggars like you can't be choosers. I've been having an awful time with it. You can do it for me. It will save me time. You look at the thing in question. Doubt she's been having an awful time with it. I doubt this is because she's still it's in its box, looking completely untouched since it was bought down here. It's a box containing a table? table that looks ominously like it was designed to keep a person strapped to its surface. I will need you to assemble it. Here's a screwdriver in case you need it. I will assume the other required tools are contained within the box. Take the screwdriver with your non-broken arm. This isn't exactly what you had in mind. You don't what you had. You don't know what you had in mind, really. A warm meal, friendly banter, perhaps a sling for your arm, and a remedial balm for your ribs. Still, you open the box without protest. Hold on. Before you start, this will make for excellent content. My fans will appreciate this. Oh. She sets up a video recording device on a tripod and points it at you. Video feed comes to life on several monitors just behind you. See on the corner of a screen an unflattering angle of your torso hunched over the furniture box. Other rectangles contain shots of the other kids in cages around the room. I suppose cameras are pointing at them too. No idea this friendship came with the perk of instant stardom. Now you may begin. She's suddenly sitting in a comfortable looking chair facing you and holding a chalice. Sacred chalice. Swishing around some vis... vis I always have a problem with that word. Viscuous. Viscuous liquid it contains. I know. 
Oh, this is no, she's a Twitch streamer. This is when the chat pops up. Do you see the little? I didn't even notice the little grub, the grub drawing of her in the background. <laughs> you have all the parts spread on the floor, organized according to their labels and the instructions. I thought I remember the last time you assembled something like this. I don't really recall enjoying it, to be perfectly honest. It doesn't look like something. It doesn't look like it'll be fun at all. She frowns conspicuously. Oh, how sad for you. I'm sorry. Is this activity not to your liking? You reassure her vigorously that no, it actually looks amazing. You love shit like this. That's what you were born for, you say, as you swoosh the screwdriver around, demonstrating your plainly evident skill with the tool. Forgetting if the thing you just thought, completely arbitrary and wrong thoughts pop into your head all the time. It meant nothing, you swear. Mm-hmm. Yes, I hear that a lot. Continue. You open the little bag full of screws. Jesus, there are like 50 screws to this thing. Where can most of these screws possibly even go? Judging from the picture, the table really doesn't seem that complicated. You look at your screwdriver, then study the screws. Every single one requires an alien wrench. They even come with an alien wrench? Oh. <laughs> Let's try that again. Every single one requires an Allen wrench. Does this even come with an Allen wrench? Instructions seem to suggest it does. Why do they have an Allen wrench in Alternia? Why do they have screwdrivers in Alternia? Why aren't they named something dumb, hussy? You look around. Oh, it probably is, but we're playing as a human. You look around, but don't see one. Did you open the bag too forcefully? Did the Allen wrench go bouncing off into a dark dungeon crevice nearby? Maybe you lost some screws, too. Damn it. You begin to sweat and look around nervously. Check underneath one of the parts. No, it's not under there. You grip the screwdriver a little tighter. You wonder what to do next. Oh, boy. Notched turn stubs. Exactly. Thank you. Just do your best assembling the table. This is what friends are for. You decided it would be best not to complain about the missing Allen wrench. Your friend would probably consider it bad form. Just make do. Twist it all you can by the screws by hand as best as you can. Broken arm isn't making this any easier. One sec. Sorry. You favor the other one and prop pieces into place precariously, leaning against one each other. Once you nudge them into position with your legs so the screw holes align. It's really frustrating work, you're not going to lie. As you're twisting the first screw, the grooves slip. The screw gets stuck, but you're already turned it too tight. Now it's harder to get out. Twist it in reverse harder. Right, your fingers slip and the table pieces start to slide. They're going to fall! You rack to catch them, but it's too late. Heavier pieces tips over and slams you in the broken ribs on its way to the floor. Hits the floor with a bang. The stuck screw pops out. Homestuck. And you go, it goes bouncing 10 or 15 feet away. Settling deep underneath a piece of dungeon furniture. God. Probably going to need to get that. You hear a light chuckle. Good. Good. She takes another sip from her chalice. Settles even more com comfortably into her chair. Is she enjoying this? I think she's enjoying watching you struggle to put this stupid thing together. Maybe a little too much. Nevertheless, you continue. Friend is a friend. You don't like to let your friends down. You committed yourself to the project. Table stuck, exactly. You will get the screw from under there a bit later. Maybe when you need the final screw. Turn your attention back to the table pieces and try a different strategy. Place the biggest part. The table platform flat on the floor. The legs would be pointing upward if they were attached. You position one leg in the right spot, in alignment for the holes, and sit on the table platform and steadily the leg with your feet. Steady the leg with your feet. Grab another screw and concentrate. Door stuck! Door stuck! <laughs> she sounds so pleased. It's strange, you admit, for watching this sort of activity to make someone so happy. She's a sadist. <laughs> but you also have to admit to taking a certain pride in it. It's wonderful, actually. I feel useful. Wanted. Important, even. If only somewhat menially to a great new friend who has discovered a way for your talents to improve her life. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice one of the caged kids reaching out with his hand. He's concentrating. Then you notice the screw you lost slowly slide out from underneath its hiding place. Nice. Everyone's working like a team down here. Our daughter does not look at the kid, but sneers a bit. She reaches towards him. He appears to have trouble breathing. After a moment, you notice the screw slowly slides back under the thing. Hi, Brett. Hello, Brittany. 
Yes, eyes. She releases him from his breathing problems and resumes her pleasant expression. Takes another sip from the chalice. Sacred chalice. Did you guess that was against the rules? You decided to make a note of it. Your friend runs a tight ship down here. You respect that. About an hour later, you have all four legs on, plus some other accoutrements attached. You wrestle mightily with the thing to get it upright, using your only good arm. Seems she may have forgotten about the final missing screw. Uh, you doubt the table needs it. You decide you won't bring it up if she won't. You give it a test. It's probably wobbly since you were only able to tighten the screws with your bare fingers, but then again, she doesn't seem to mind. She reclines, has a look on her face which makes her appear absolutely enamored of your handiwork. She has finished her drink and the chalice is on the side table. Some awful looking thing crawls along the floor towards her. Uh, we already did your boy. There's only two friends in this because it's act one. There's her and there's hot dog meat boy. And I already did meat boy. Meat boy is done. Obviously, I wasn't going to start with her. Looks like some sort of spider. The size of an average dog. Its abdomen is preposterously large. Actually, you think it's a huge tick? That's what it looks like. Oh, God. Jesus, it's... God, is it not a spider? Is she not spider-themed? Is she tick-themed? Jesus Christ, that's horrifying. That's somehow more horrifying than fucking... Than fucking spiders. Wait, that's why there was blood. Oh, God. That's... Ugh, I don't like that. It settles just in front of her. She puts her legs on top of it and crosses them. It settles under their weight and grumbles. Let's try it out, shall we? You shrug and sit down at the rather rickety table. You're about to lie down, but she interrupts you. No. You fool. You absolute fool. What do you think you're doing? That's not what I meant. Get up. You stand up, embarrassed. Again, without looking at the caged kid, she raises an arm towards him and beckons. Stares blankly and opens his own cage, which apparently wasn't locked. He shuffles vacantly over to your table and lies down on its surface. She looks at you expectantly. You aren't sure what to do. What? You didn't think I'd be playing table stickball on that thing, did you? You aren't sure what table stickball is. Oh, you are pretty simple, aren't you? It's like a miniature version of a ran arena stickball played on a table. Got it. You don't, but you nod. Now go to it. <laughs> you shackle the kid's arms and legs to the table. That seems to be the right thing to do since the thing comes fitted with shackles. She gets up and lifts her huge tick-like pet. Makes more grumpy noises. She plops the enormous thing right down to the kid's chest. He appears to be Randall unable to protest. The tick bites the boy's neck and begins to feed. She smiles and pats its swelling abdomen. Dark, rust-colored blood dribbles from the place that is attached to the boy's neck. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's 99 cents. Because it's only two. It's only two friends. Moments go by while she looks gratified by the process. Proud, almost. Then she looks at you expectantly. Well, you don't know what she means. The final screw. Aren't you going to retrieve it and screw it into wherever it needs to go? The job isn't done. I don't keep the company of many individuals who leave things unfinished, you know. Of course. What were you thinking? You should have known your friend wouldn't let you go on that go unnoticed. Actually, you feel like an idiot for thinking it would. You stoop very low to the ground on your knees, placing your cheek just above the floor. You peer into the large edifice. It's dark in there. That thing goes back a ways. Lots of room for that darn little scooter roll. You take a, two, a few pitiful swipes with your good arm, but come up empty. Must be further back. You think you can see it? Yeah, that must be it. Just a little further. You have an idea. A tool that would be helpful. Guess the screwdriver will come in handy after all. How did she know? Your new friend must be very wise. I think you're liking her more every minute. Grab the screwdriver and feel around with it. Yeah, you... Yes! You got it, you think. Carefully scrape it close to yourself and then pick it up. You go back to the table and find the one remaining hole you left unscrewed. Slide under the table as a mechanic would with a car. There it is. The table is creaking and wobbling quite a bit now. The tick is really getting into its dinner, it seems. All the loose screws in the table have added up to a lot of give and leeway in the overall stability of the furnishing. Maybe the final screw will help. 
Our data has returned to the setup with the monitors. She's adjusting some of the settings on the feed, controlling the zoom of the camera, and typing some remarks into a chat window. <laughs> this is very good material today. It's not often that I can provide content of this caliber to my subscribers. Go on, complete your project. Hear that, guys? It's you! <laughs> this will be very good. I still think it's weird that she likes watching you put furniture together so much. But you're not one to judge friends. Sounds like a great way to lose friends, honestly. You screw in the final screw, but the stresses of the table are causing the holes to be misaligned. This won't be easy. The huge tick shifts its grotesque body above you, causing the table to creak loudly. You nervously slide halfway from the table to check it out. Then a loud pop. The sound of scraping metal. Six or seven screws shoot out of the desk like rivets of a sinking submarine. What a piece of shit this thing is. I think a little too late. Need that. You really need that Allen wrench. All four legs splay dramatically up from underneath it at once, like a baby deer on ice. The table platform comes crashing down in your lower torso, breaking your pelvis. You bellow in pain and flail to pull yourself out. Jesus Christ. Oh my god! You forget that you're still holding the screwdriver and you're desperate flailing. You plunge the screwdriver into the fat abdomen of the tick, which begins gushing rust to blood and the f great force spraying your entire upper body and face. Beast starts thrashing wildly and screaming. You can't see your new friend due to the blood in your eyes. You can't imagine she's thrilled about what's going on here. Your annihilated pelvis is in perfect agony. You have to get your miserable torso out from underneath the shitty table. You have an idea. What is happening? Jesus Christ. By the way, M Meat Boy, your hot dog boy, his story was like twice as short as this. Like way shorter. And not as fucked up. I knew it was going to be fucked up. I knew she was going to be fucked up. Because she's just like Vriska. With your broken arm, you start slapping the big ass of the screaming tick while yelling, Yeehaw! You clutch the screwdriver handle to your other <laughs> hand hard. Goodbye. The blood gushing monster starts kicking and rearing, then blasts off across the dungeon floor like a pig or a rodeo. Hold on for dear life, still blind, but your plan works. You've been pulled out from under the tomb you've spent the last hour constructing for yourself. Your pelvis is in ruins, but at least you're free now, riding like the wind. As, your blood, as, the, as you and the blood spewing tech go tearing off around the room, crashing into stuff, you hear a boy crying. You guess our, our daughter became distracted enough by your foolish display to cease her paralyzation method on him. Maybe he was distracted is the wrong word? Maybe she's disappointed by your foolishness. Oh, God. Might be blowing it right now. Tick swerves suddenly and starts running up the stairs. Ow, ow, ow. Your brittle pelvis feels every step on the way up. It careens through the rest of the hive, crashes through the front door, and then comes to a sudden halt. Catapulted violently over its backside, sail 50 yards through the air. You land on your ass and wipe the blood from your eyes. Okay, that was, was embarrassing. But everyone makes mistakes, right? You can still salvage this friendship. You know you can. You turn back to look at her hive. Ardada is standing in the doorway with a furious look on her face. She's flipping you off. You will not be my friend. Rejection! Is there a way to win that? I wonder if there's a way to fuck up everyone. Because there were a couple choices. Hmm. Mimos, when are you when are you gonna be down for Shovel Knight? I'm kinda curious. Can I Can I fuck this up? Hold on. What if I choose different things? The music is really good, but then again. Alright, well, we'll do Shovel Knight. I just wanna Sounds fine, I guess. Get the fuck out of my face and never come back. <laughs> Alright, guess that choice doesn't work too well. What a bitch. <laughs> she's not a spider bitch, she's a tick bitch. Oh my goodness, alright. Let's let's do a little bit of skippy skip. 
I was not expecting to play this tonight. I had no idea this was coming out today. It seems about right, though. Get the hell out of there. Yeah, I know. First, you clear your head and try to think innocent thoughts. Fluffy clouds in the sky, ironing some clothes. Winning touchdown pass from the sports. Our daughter's long black hair spilling over her cloak hurt. Wait, these are not innocent thoughts. Shut it down, shut it down. No time for thinking, you have to act. You throw the screwdriver at her and run. She calmly lifts a hand towards one of the kids in the cages. The kid tenses up and lifts a hand in the direction of the screwdriver. The screwdriver freezes midair right in front of our daughter's head. You run up the stairs. She twitches a finger and the caged hit. The kid does a full body spasm. Screwdriver goes sailing towards you. It stabs you deep in your leg. You buckle over, tumbling backwards down the stairs. Your crumpled heap at the bottom of the stairs bleeding. You think your arm is broken in two places now. That didn't seem very friendly to me. Luckily for you, I'm very determined to make relationships work. Even with people who flee simply fur simple furniture assembly projects. Stands over you. You attempt to pull the screwdriver out of your leg, but your entire body locks up. You can't move. She holds an outstretched hand just above you. You should try to move yet. You shouldn't try to move yet. And you certainly shouldn't try to pull out that screwdriver. You'll get blood everywhere. To my three little eyes, under that present conditions, it seems to me only one of us should attempt walking up these stairs. I feel relieved. Perhaps she has some alien means of levitating you up the stairs? Wait, no. Your body is tensing up again. It's moving without your permission. You get to your feet without taking your screwdriver out. Wow, that hurts. Why is she making you... Wait, what? She can't be. You use both of your arms and all your strength and pick her up entirely. The pain from your arm is excruciating. Arms with broken bones are not meant for heavy lifting. The additional weight on your wounded leg isn't great either. You hold her, in the, in the, you hold her as a groom would hold a bride. She wraps her arms around your neck to hang on to you in what strikes you as an overly familiar manner. She looks directly in your eyes and grins. This is better. Now, onward and upward, new friend. <laughs> oh, God. This is... Oh, my God. You know how the thing said probably Vriska? I think she... Well, I don't want to say worse than Vriska. But, uh... A little more sadistic than Vriska. Vriska was still pretty bad. Your legs begin to operate without your consent. They wobble and struggle under the weight. The wound throbs. You lumber back up the long flight of stairs, carrying her all the way. Take her back to the kitchen. Set her down in a chair seated at the table. You didn't think I'd forget about dinner time, did you? Let's put your unfriendly behavior behind us. It's a good thing... It's a good thing for you that I'm benevolent enough to overlook disgusting acts of betrayal. You may have noticed I keep several friends in my hives who, I'm sim who I have similarly forgiven. Consider the transgression, the transgression blood beneath the abattoir. You exhale. Now that she mentions it, yes, you are hungry. Maybe a warm meal will lift your spirit to get this here, here to. F Fuck, hussy, why? It doesn't help that the longer I read, the worse I get at it. This heretofore turbulent friendship back on track. Maybe you'll even get the chance to pull this screwdriver out of your leg. You pull the chair out to attempt to sit down, but your legs lock up and then you stand again. Apparently, this was not the right thing to do. Okay. Oh, but why are you sitting? There's cooking to be done. Oh, my God. You stagger mechanically over to the fridge and open it. You pull out a large hawk of some alien mysterious meat. Put it on the counter. <laughs> That's how it works now. It might as well in Homestuck. You've seen the fucking shipping chart. With your broken arm, you reach in anguish for a big dangling meat cleaver. You chop the hawk, wincing at each swing of the cleaver. I didn't know that that was the way she likes it. But you surmise this is what she prefers in a piece of meat, since technically she's the one doing the cooking. You put it on the table in front of her, along with a fork and knife beside it. Your muscles relax as you apparently are allowed to control your own body again. She does nothing except look at you with a pleased expression. 
the eye of meat in front of the you eye the meat in front of her, then the meat on the counter and the chair on the other side of the table. Should you do prepare a plate for yourself? Is that what she wants you to do? Well, it looks like you're confused. Isn't it obvious what you should do next under your own volition? A good friend would know what to do. In fact, I don't think a good friend would take nearly as long to decide what the right thing to do next is. It actually seems to me that a very rude friend would hesitate for as long as you are hesitating. Or perhaps someone who is not a friend at all. You begin to sweat again. Clearly don't have much time to make up your mind. If you wait for every... F uh, if you wait even a few seconds longer, you will probably be guilty of a being a bad friend. Maybe even a dreadful one. It's not the type of person you like to think you are. What will you do? Feed her. It seems like the only obvious thing to do. She's looking up to you quite expectantly. You reach for the fork with your good arm. You go for the knife with your other and Ow. Can't do it. The arm is much less serviceable with the muscles are not being forced via psychic override to disregard the pain response. Nevertheless, she looks at you patiently and smiles. That's nice of her, you think. Not to be mad about it. You feel like you're growing closer to your new friend by the minute. This is the definition of an abusive relationship. Put the fork down and pick up the knife with your good arm. Cut the meat into several pieces with a careful sawing motion. Put the knife down and pick up the fork and stab a piece. Put it close to her mouth. She seems pleased. Very good. Nice technique. Well-sized morsels, too. She chews the meat with excellent form. She has very good table manners, you think. She finishes the pieces. You slice off some more and continue. That meat looks very good. Your mouth is watering, but she doesn't offer any. Oh, well. When it's the right time for you to eat, too, you sure, you're sure she will let you know. The meal is finished. There is no more meat except for a few pieces of unchewable gristle, which you did not try to feed her. That would be thoughtless. Very bad service. She reclines and steeples her fingers, looking quite pleased with how the evening has gone so far. <laughs> you aren't sure why she's laughing. Did you do something funny? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> what a fool. You point at yourself, wondering if she's referring to you. You don't know what you've done that was so foolish, if so. You're still not sure what she finds so amusing. Ha 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 She pauses her laughter for a minute or two, then slowly begins to frown. A faint blue tear rolls down her cheek from her bottom eye. The truth is, I don't even know why I'm laughing. This isn't very funny, what's happening here. It was a good dinner. You did a good job, whoever you are. She puts her face in both her hands and sobs quietly. You have no idea what to do about this. You stand there, still holding the fork, feeling a bit useless. There is a lot of pressure, you know. Being so respected and admired for your high status in this world. I didn't ask for this. To be so superior to so many. Much is expected of you. Much is presumed about what your personality will be before you even develop one. You work hard and build a brand based only on what you think people assume you should be like. Sometimes I wonder, am I even good at being sinister? Could I be more sinister if I tried harder? Maybe this is not my true calling after all. You begin to offer words of sympathy. This all seems heartbreaking to you. Your poor new friend. But your jaw muscles contract and your mouth shuts involuntarily. Hi, Isu. You guess it's not your turn to speak yet? Okay, that works for you. You like to be a good listener to your friends. She is a bitch. Holy shit. But what would happen if I changed my brand? If I stopped being so sinister online? My friends and followers will deride and reject me. My superiors will eat me alive. Yeah, I don't like Ardana. If I show weakness, if I scale back my bloodthirsty content, will I incur the scorn of a wise-ass clown with a huge mill? The hundred million subscribers. Will I be in a cage someday, listen to a fucking fool honk his horn for likes? Oh, God. No. I must persist. How lonely it is to know that this is all I can do until the day I leave this planet. I have no material or sensory comforts left for me here. Till I can get on a ship and fly away, pain is my only solace. Your hand holding the fork grips it tighter. You're horrified to realize what it is in the process of doing. You bring it down you bring it down hard on her hand. 
She's placed flat on the table. She doesn't flinch or react in any way. Three trails of cerulean blood flow from the tines where they pierce her skin. That wasn't friendly, you think. But then, you weren't the one who did it, were you? You're so confused. My subscribers are not real friends. They adore me only for my sinister content. The show I will provide. My wicked, infectious laughter. I get jealous of them sometimes because they get to watch my content. It must be thrilling, I think. But maybe. I'm just jealous of them because they get to be people who aren't me. This is fucking deep, I know. Apologies if you cannot relate. She pulls the fork out of her hand and lays it gently on the plate of gristle you didn't feed her. People downstairs in their cages aren't my friends either. They act like they're my friends, though, and sometimes I even believe it. But they don't really want to be friends with me. Nobody does. The only person who has ever really wanted to be my friend, who ever tried to be, was you. Clear your throat and point to yourself innocently. That's it. I've decided. You have passed the test. You will become my friend, officially. As such, I think a reward is in order. You're overjoyed. Your heart starts racing. You can't believe it. New real friend. You don't have much time to enjoy this achievement. Your body is doing something again. You bend down in a strained motion and pick up the plate and fork. You position the plate over your wide open mouth and scrape in all the remaining gristle and begin chewing. This is virtually inedible. Your mouth humors the act of chewing for two seconds and then you swallow all of it whole in one painful gulp. Tastes like friendship. Friendship? <laughs> Well, what a fucked up character. Alright, I wanna do I wanna do before we do Shovel Knight, I wanna uh I wanna take a look at the other choices for Meat Boy. I don't think that's what friends are. Yeah, I did hot dog already. I did hot dog first. You think I was gonna do fucking tick bitch first? Uh, ask if you can have a bite of his hot dog. It looks amazing. Forget it! I'm leaving forever. Bye! I like- Oh, I got the- Oh, I got the good ending. Don't worry, I got- I got the good ending of first try with Hot Dog Boy. Disrespectful. I like how there's always one instant death ending. There's always one instant death ending. Of course I did. I, I, got the, I got the good ending right away. I got the friend ending. I wanted to be friends too. I love this boy. Some of the endings. All of the endings. Give him a friendly pat on the back. Keep it simple. Pat him on the back a couple times. Everything's going to be okay since you're his new friend. Or at least the working towards earning that status. He has a new ally to help him with whatever comes his way. Ah, eh, fuck Skip. He wipes his tears and appears to get himself back together. The friendly gesture worked. You're right. I shouldn't let the past get me down. In a way, I'm free. I'm off the grid. They probably think I died. No need to worry about knocks on my door because I don't have a door anymore. Oh boy. Maybe I can live off the land for the rest of my life. Scrounging for scrumptious, sumptuous indulgences wherever I may find them. By rummaging through awful drums. Or smooth talking the right mark. Sounds like the life, honestly. I'll miss my Lucius, but I think he would be proud of me. If I can make it without him, I can survive on my own. I know he would be proud. Maybe I don't even need to leave the planet. Maybe I can avoid taking the ordeals altogether. Can't test who you can't find. If I play my cards right, I could probably live to the ripe old age on this planet without getting caught. Like hiding in alleys and sewers, scraping together just enough succulent proteins to keep myself going. Honestly, I don't even need to get by that long, since I have a much shorter lifespan than most trolls. What? Oh. Because he's... Oh no. Hear that, Brett? Your boy's gonna die! So I think I might be able to make this work. Wait, does that mean some trolls have shorter lifespans than... Oh god, is Karkat gonna die? Are Karkat and Aradia gonna die? Soon? I don't like that. 
Oh no, I didn't know that they had different lifespans. Shut up. I know. I know. Funny. Funny joke. Um, but they probably have the same lifespan as humans. Because they have red blood. So, they... Okay. Yeah. You look confused at his last remark. But then again, don't want to be impolite. Holds up his hands as if to tell you not to bother. I can tell you you're not from here. It's okay. Rest bloods don't live a long time. Blood classes higher than me live progressively longer than the higher you go up. Sea dwellers live basically forever. It's kind of crazy. It seems unfair, but that's how it is. Oh. Didn't know. I'd be jealous of them, but I think I'm not. I'm almost grateful. I don't... Oh, shit. Kanai is going to outlive Rose. Stand, everyone. Stand to the stream. All right, they're gods. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> level's grateful. I don't have long to make it in this world. I don't know what I'd do if I had longer. I'm happy to settle it into a nice short ride. Keep a low profile. Taking some good meat along the way. Nothing wrong with that life, if you ask me. You understand. It seems like a pretty tragic story. But if your friend has made peace with his destiny, you might as well, too. Sad. That's sad. Oh no. Offer a sympathetic shrug and continue your impressive streak of consecutive seconds, not looking at the hot dog at all. He smiles again. He seems to be relaxing, gripping the dog a little less tightly. That's good. You know, you're good at listening. Not many people understand me at all. A lot of my people have find my overly possessive attitude towards meaty delights to be strange and off-putting. <laughs> I've heard this more than once and lost some friends that way. Phew. There are some past personal dramas I do not want to think about, let me tell you. But you're different. Maybe you put me at ease because it's obvious you're even lower than me? No offense, but you are. Drones would vaporize a hordeless goof like you, no questions asked. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. You laugh it off. You're not scared, you say. You've survived worse. You pat your broken ribs and wince. Clutch your sore ribs with your broken arm and wince even harder because of that. Oh, man. Looks like that arm hurts, huh? I guess it's broken. Let's see what you could do about that. Hold this for a second. Hands you his hot dog without hesitation. Oh, wow. He wants you to hold it? Such a remarkable gesture of trust. You're overwhelmed. Gingerly take the hot dog with your good arm, being very careful. Hold the hot dogs from beneath your fingertips as if it's priceless, delicate treasure. Takes off his vest and puts it on the ground. Then he takes off his shirt. You avert your eyes for a moment, then realize that's silly. Nothing particularly in indecent about this, you suppose. If he's comfortable, so are you. Oh shit, shirtless boy. Then he puts his vest back on and takes the hot dog back from you and hands you the shirt. Yeah, make a slug out of it. That should help. He's right. It does help. Broken arm is a lot more comfortable and secure. This shirt smells like meat, too. Can't tell if that's a bonus or if it's just weird. You decide it's a bonus. This is your new friend. He loves meat, and so do you. It's your greatest common interest, in fact. Nice. You know, I think we make a pretty good team. I don't know if I'm ready to officially call you my friend yet, but I might be getting close. You're pushing all the right buttons, man. Just being someone who listens and understands. You have no idea how much this means to me. So happy to hear this. It makes your heart sing. Well, if you're keeping it totally real, some of these things he's saying are just a little strange. Maybe this boy wasn't really socialized properly by his Lucis, you guess? You think you might you think that might be his dad, but again, you don't dare ask. Not when the positive feelings are flowing like this. Why kill the mood? Gets a little closer and swoops a hand through his thick black bangs. At the briefest moment you catch a glimpse of his eyes regarding you fondly. Your heart beats a little faster. Puts a hand on your shoulder, you're starting to wonder if all he's interested in is friendship. Hope that's all he wants. You don't think you're ready for anything more than that. You're desperate for friendship or really companionship of any sort, but that's moving pretty fast for you. 
You're too nervous to make your feelings clear on this. If he goes any further, you're not sure if you'll have the will to protest. Listen, dude. This gorgeous meat product that we both admire, I'm thinking, maybe we share it? I think that sounds good, actually. Oh my, yes, that sounds wonderful. You're so hungry, and you're beside yourself with gratitude that Damien is willing to... Diamond is willing to... I keep calling him Damien. He's willing to share uh, with you something so precious to him. It really means a lot. I hear, I have an idea. He brings his face close to yours. He holds the hot dog between your faces. With both ends of the dog pointing at his mouth and yours. Not sure what he wants you to do. You can't find the breath to ask. It seems like he wants you to eat the hot dog with him, lady and tramp style. Yes, if pressed on it, you'd agree the act is uncomfortably erotic. But you have to admit, it is a good way to share a food item whilst ensuring it gets split about evenly. And you absolutely loathe the idea of letting your friend down. It's completely at odds with your values as a person. You chomp down in your end of the hot dog as you get those with his head simultaneously. Holy shit, it is so good. Takes another bite. This time it's bite perfectly. He's eerily good at this game. Throwing you off your chewing a bit, which makes you cough a little when you swallow. But you don't feel like you can pause without breaking eating rhythm with him. Might be what a bad friend would do. You keep going without really quite swallowing as you go. You get closer to his face, which is creating an imminent situation you sure aren't how you're going to handle. You haven't planned for it. It's coming up fast. The hot dog backlog is... Yes, exactly. Oh, God. The hot dog backlog collecting in your throat is getting a bit too heavy. So you try to swallow, but you can't. You gag and cough up all the chewed hot dog matter explosively into his face. Oh, no! He recoils, absolutely stunned. His bangs are blown back, and he's staring at you. Wide eyes, hot dog bun bits are all over his face. He says nothing for a moment. And he puts his hand to his throat. Oh, fuck, he's choking. Points at his mouth desperately. You need to do something. The Heimlich, of course. His arm's broken. Holy shit. <laughs> he needs to save your friend's life. Get behind him and put your good arm around his belly and form a fist. You plunge the fist under his ribs, trying to dislodge this masticated delicacy. It's no use. You can't get any leverage. You use your other arm. It really hurts, though. You have to make a sacrifice for your friend. Yes, a friend who may have just tried to trick you into kissing him with a silly hot dog stunt. You're not sure how you'll navigate that tricky subject once he's breathing again, but you'll have to deal with that later. Right now, you have a life to save. You pull your broken arm out of the sling and grab the other fist in front of his belly and squeeze. I hope he dies. I'll laugh. You try and try and try. His face is turning, well, not blue. Deep red? Guess it causes blood is rust-colored. Sure, that makes sense. Yank one more time, your broken arm throbbing in pain. A huge gob of cheap... <laughs> He didn't have legs, it was cropped off. <laughs> the huge gob of chewed hot dog launches out of his mouth like a cannibal and explosion creates enough force in the other direction. Causes you to actually lift him up into the air and accidentally suplex him into the mud behind you. Turn and tumbling. You turn you in turn go tumbling over him. The two of you are soon locked into an inseparable pinwall. Pinwall of interspecies downhill mayhem. You roll and roll in the grassy incline toward a nearby neighborhood, toward a street. <laughs> Luckily, you stop short of the street, but Diamond's neck lands right on top of the sharp edge of the curb. Oh. Oh, I think you might be dead. After flipping in the air once or twice, you come down right in his face with a big ass of your crack. Diamond? Slap his cheek a little. No response. He's not breathing. You check his mouth, throw it his cause not trying to breathe. Can't be happening. You look around, panic. This is what you need right now. All you wanted was a friend. You can't be held responsible for alien murder. <laughs> you try to hide the body. You see a couple kids creeping out of nearby houses to see what all the commotion is. There's no time. You've got to find a bush or something. There, over there, it looks like a little alien bushy thing. It's pretty small, but it'll have to do. You drag the best in shirtless carcass over to the bush. You dump the body in the bush, and it's really not convincing. Looks like a dead kid was on service and dropped a tub of small bush in a poor attempt to conceal a murder. Gotta come up with a better- Wait a minute. Someone is standing behind you. Oh! I wasn't expecting this. Hello, stranger. Don't worry about this little mess you've made. I'll take care of it for you.
Happy 413, everyone. <laughs>